Hey class, welcome back to another episode of Riding with Mr. Ruck Dashel. Today's episode four, and we are actually going to get started with a lot of writing today, which is really exciting because writing and learning about writing should involve a lot of writing. So I had some fun with this, tr- trying to write one of my new scenes and then seeing how I can improve it. And you're going to kind of see the path that I took to make that happen. So first of all, get those writing journals open if you haven't already. And before we go on any further, I just want to remind some of you out there that are maybe watching the video and not coming in uh, and taking part in our Zooms. Um, or if you have any friends out there that are kind of saying, hey, I can't I can't access all this stuff because I don't have my laptop or I don't have my writing journal, whatever it is. Um, we want to make sure that everyone's involved in some way. So if you're not doing the lessons along with us, you can still come in and Zoom. I know it's a lot of fun to to zoom and see all of your friends. I understand if you're not super interested in doing all these writing lessons with us, but we still want to see you. So come join us in the zoom if you haven't already. And if you have any friends that you know are in that, that boat, tell them, tell them to get in there, get in the zoom. We want to see them. But also I have fun doing these videos and I hope that the people that are watching them have fun doing them. So join us in the, in the zoom, but, but first try watching some of these videos and going through it on your own. Feel free to send me emails if you have questions. So first off today, the big idea is that we explore our writing by developing plot setting or character. In other words, our writing has to explore the world that we're in. And that world includes what our story's really about and the path to getting there. That's what I mean by plot. The setting is all the things that are around us. We need to be able to visualize, to see your story. We talk about show, not tell. This is show. This is a thousand percent show. And finally, a story is not a story without amazing characters. If you are asked about your two to three main characters and what they're like personality wise, you should be able to say, oh, hey, this character is kind of whiny and they all they really want out of the story is to end up with some better friends. I know that's the case for my character you're going to meet later on. And so everything I write for that character needs to stick with that. My own character, I know, has kind of a chip on his shoulder because he's been bullied in the past. He's now kind of lashing out. He's He's sort of feeling like the best way to get along with others is kind of being the bully himself. And he's going to have to make a decision about whether that's truly what he wants. So thinking about the why, it's kind of what we already talked about. You need to be able to know your character and the world they live in. So here's another reason kind of why this matters. I know out there, uh, if you're watching this video, um, Feel free to raise your hands if this is you, even though I can't see you. Have you ever had that friend or or met a new friend to where you kind of thought this was like, hey, this is maybe my best friend. Like, this is someone I'm having so much fun with and you don't dig deeply into it. You're doing a lot of fun things together, but you never really get to know them. And it gets to a point where you go, I don't. I, I can't be friends with this person, but you're stuck. You feel like you don't know how to get out of it. Well, our stories are the same way. If we don't really dive deep into what our characters are like early on and know what decisions they would make because they almost are like a real person to us, then we get to a part in the story where we go, I don't know what to do. I can't unfriend this character. I need to, I need to change them. Now, thankfully, in our character, we can just delete them in our story or rechange parts of the story. Now, in real life, (laughs) it's a little more challenging. So we really need to make sure, though, when we're writing our story, we have a clear picture in our mind of what that character is like. So my example of 
what my story's like before versus after. And when I wrote this before section, I just kind of wrote it. And I went back to look and see what it was I didn't do a great job of. And so as I'm reading it, try to notice to yourself, what is it that my story lacks? Is it character development? Is it difficult to get a clear idea of what the character is like? Is it setting? As in, we don't have a lot of details that really show us where our characters are at. Or is it plot? And by plot, I mean, is our part of the story lacking things that are related to the problem or the solution to the problem? Now, this part of my story is the first scene that I'm writing from. And you should be very clear when you're thinking about what you're writing, what scene it is too. Because I know this is scene one, I know that my plot needs to be hinting at the problem to come. I know that my setting is in my classroom, in my sixth grade class. And I know that my two characters in the scene, the only two, the main ones, are David and Jimmy. Yes, I did change their names. Here we go. David gritted his teeth, the tip of his tongue peeking out from the corner of his mouth with concentration. Coloring had never been his greatest talent. Mrs. Allison had remarked about this often. He would show her. Can I borrow a pen blue pencil? Came a distant voice. Jimmy. Ugh. Wrinkling his nose in disgust, David smirked. They're mine. In a high nasally voice, Jimmy replied. But you let Quentin borrow one. He's my friend. David replied, turning back to his coloring page. Mic drop. Okay. So I know that when I look in that scene, I see some really sort of clear characters. Or at least Jimmy I'm definitely defining as kind of annoying. Kind of whining. David I've kind of defined as like, hey, like whatever. I don't have time for you. He's kind of got a chip on his shoulder. So as far as character goes, I'm good. Plot? They're already starting to argue about whether he can borrow a pencil, and since we know the problem's going to arise from this, the, the clear bullying, we know that this is the hint to come. So I'm doing good so far with my plot and my character. Which leaves what? Yeah, that's right. Setting. So, in my next scene, the after... You're going to see how I've looked at this scene, I've reread it, and then I've revised it by adding to it, specifically thinking as I add, what parts of this could I be adding, setting details to? So my example. Example number two, after revising, take a deep breath. Ooh. Taking a deep breath after another difficult recess, David gritted his teeth the tip of his tongue peeking out from the corner of his mouth with concentration. Light scratching sounds filled the classroom. Coloring had never been David's greatest talent. Mrs. Allison had remarked about this often. He would show her. This quiet rhythmic sound relaxed David, and soon he was rocking back and forth in his seat, brows furled, furrowed with controlled effort, like a car crash. His moment was shattered by a piercing voice. Can I borrow a blue pencil? Uh, Jimmy, why can't he leave me alone? He thought. Turning slowly to his right, he stared Jimmy in the eyes. A pregnant pause followed, which he broke with the wrinkling of his nose. They're mine. As if he expected this, Jimmy spat out in a high, nasally voice. But you let, you let Quentin borrow one. As he said this, he leaned out of his seat to bridge the chasm between them. His arm reached out towards David's desk as a bold move, considering their difference in size. With a light flick of his hand, David swatted back Jimmy's intrusive reach, as if David was no more than a fly buzzing toward his desk. He's my friend. David replied, turning back to his coloring page. This conversation was over. 
So we were really trying to focus on setting details and the things that I really purposely put in there were that was that first paragraph where I talked about us coming in from recess. I talked about the light scratching sounds that filled the classroom. So it's remember, it's not just describing what the classroom looks like. It's about all of our sensory details. So this is sound that I'm talking about. If you move on to the second paragraph, you'll notice again, I'm talking about the sound relaxing David. And then we get a visual where he's rocking back and forth in his seat. If you move on to our second to last paragraph, you'll notice towards the end or rather middle of the second to last paragraph, I have Jimmy lean out of his seat to bridge the chasm between them. In other words, they aren't sitting that close together. Jimmy has to actually make an effort to reach and sort of invade the space of David's desk. Those are the details that I really was focused on establishing that there's just this almost relaxing, soothing sound in the classroom. That's the setting. That this is interrupted by Jimmy's intrusion. And the distance between them would suggest that he shouldn't be intruding upon him. So I tried to be very specific with that. I think that there are more opportunities before my scene starts, or at least before I, the part of the scene I've written so far, and after it, that I could add more setting details. I'll be able to continue to have details about my characters and continue to develop this uh, set of hints that will lead to my problem. But for right now, I think what I've added there, after having reviewed my first set of writing, really helps us to visualize what's going on. So at this point, I hope that you've done your own before and after. Your before section, you may not have written yet. You might also, though, have. You might take your before as one of the scenes you wrote previously when we talked about doing a blurb and then following that up with a scene that's kind of around where your problem is, your problem scene. And we talked about starting that with dialogue or small actions. That's the first place to start. Make sure you've got some sort of before scene to work with. If you don't, now's the opportunity to write one. Once you've finished writing that before scene, reread it, thinking about the three main things that we want to consider in that setting, plot, and character. Are those three things in the before? How much is in there? Whichever one you think is least, I don't know if you could hear that. I had a little helicopter flyby. Whichever one you think is least, that's what we should add in sort of a revision of that original scene we wrote. We want to rewrite these scenes multiple times. So our goal today with episode four is do your best to get as much written of these different scenes, scene one, scene two, scene three. At this point, if all I did for scene one was this, I would actually be okay. It's a small moment. I know there are a lot of things I will add and should add, but I've accomplished what I needed to accomplish. For me, it's okay to move on to scene two and get a similar version as far as how much I've written for scene two and then do the same for scene three. At that point, we'll have time later to do more, to add on, to revise, to have greater amount of detail. But our goal today is to have three different scenes really roughly written like I just did. And I realize I'm just the teacher, but I only took a couple minutes to write each one of these. I'm not taking tons of time to really pour over it. Now, obviously, 
this after scene is kind of a revision. So that helped me. And this next scene I write, scene two might take longer and that's fine. Everyone works at their own pace, but I'm trying to get in your mind that if you're thinking a lot, if you're overanalyzing, it's going to really get in the way of you seeing what's in your scene. You got to fill yourself up with that scene ahead of time. See everything in, in your scene. See everything in your scene that is important. And then pour it out of your pencil into that piece of paper. Or out of the, your fingertips into your keyboard. Okay, well, that's going to be the end of episode four. Hope that you got something good out of that. And remember, the big takeaway is take a scene from before and revise it. That's our after scene here that we're looking at. Make sure that when you read your before scene, you're thinking about our three things again. Setting, plot, character. All right. I hope to see you in our next Zoom. And I hope that you are getting a lot out of these writing episode videos. Because again, I'm having a lot of fun doing them. I hope that you're doing well and staying safe. Peace.